Hello, hello. This is Hammer here again. Today I'm gonna make things a bit more complicated for those of you who care to stay with me. Just so you know, this video deals entirely with control voltages, so if you're not interested, you have my blessings to leave right away, so you won't disturb the rest of us by leaving later, okay? Thank you, I'm pleased so many of you stayed, and especially you. Yes, you. Hope you'll hang in all the way. I will present to you a combinator patch, which is available for download at hammer.se and named something like harmonizer and octave shifter blah blah blah. This is quite a complex setup, including not only MIDI tappers, but also several meshes, a couple of minglers and a mod stepper. Using it should be much easier than it was designing it, but to make use of it for your own needs, you're better off if you understand these devices and this patch. To completely grasp what I will show you, it's helpful, perhaps required, that you have some experience of playing around with cables and control voltages on the rear side of your recent rack. Understanding how these separate devices work will also help. On the other hand, you can always run this video again. So, what's it all about then? Well, what I've tried to accomplish here is to have a basic home and life setup stored in a combinator patch, from which I can start when creating new patches with additional stuff. So, what would be so special about my home setup? Well, for one thing, I want to include some basic features of the Hammer devices. And at home, and for light traveling, I only use one small MIDI keyboard and no remote controllers. This is where the idea of MIDI tap-up is perfect. To use a few keys on the MIDI keyboard to tweak important parameters in the rack. The keyboard I use doesn't have a split. So if I change the octave range going out from the MIDI keyboard, my tap keys will move as well, away from the keyboard so to speak. So my aim here was to create a setup where I can change octaves for my little 25 key laptop keyboard while still keeping all tap keys in place, independent of octave. But I still want to change octave from the MIDI keyboard. As we will find out, there are some trade-offs, but I, at least, am willing to live with those. By the way, in this video, I'll be using the on-screen keyboard rather than my 25 key and click with my mouse so you can follow what's happening. My general plan was to use a tap key to change octave in the rack. And after a couple of painstaking hours, I came up with a good enough solution to use for many of my combinators. As an example of other things I'd like to have available from tap keys, I also added harmonics using a measure, which can be turned on and off with the tap key. Now it's time to take a closer look at the setup. First the easy part, well, fairly easy, how to use it. The MIDI keyboard is always set to play C of the zero octave at the low end. Octave is controlled with low C as tap key. A single tap will move up one octave, a double tap will move down and press moves to the middle octave. Harmonics are controlled with C sharp. A single tap will add or remove a fourth up and a double tap switches a fourth down. The levels of the harmonics are controlled from the velocity of the same tap key, C sharp. The tap key velocity is sampled by the MIDI tapper only when the tap key is pressed, not when it's tapped. You can see on the MIDI tapper harmonics whether the harmonics are blocked or not. Above C sharp, the keyboard can be used for regular playing. As you may notice, the trade-off of the setup is that every played note is sustained until all keys are released. This is due to the nature of sequences CV, as I'm sure you're aware of. You know, there's only one gate signal for all the sounding notes. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? Octave on the C key, tap is up, double tap is down, and press is for moving to the mid octave. Harmonics are on the C sharp key, tap for one, double tap for the other, and press to set velocity. Moving on now to how all this works. Stay awake. The instrument, and a 19 piano in this case, 
does not receive notes from the MIDI directly, but instead originate from the through outputs of a MIDI tapper. Following these cables, we reach the note to harm measure. No, not hit to harm, note to harm, think lawyer. Where was I? Oh yeah, at the note to harm measure, the note is split to inputs 1, 2 and 3. These note levels are shifted to the offsets 0, minus 5 and plus 5, giving the prime note a fourth down and a fourth up. These three notes are next joined back together to a chord on a single note cable by the use of two minglers. The output sequence of path from the minglers go all the way down to the seek CV out measure, where the note is shifted according to the currently selected octave. And now, at last, the note and gate CV signals are ready to connect to an instrument. That was the note and gate signal path. Piece of cake? Again? Okay. MIDI received by MIDI tapper, through output to the note to harm measure, split to 3, shift separately, mingle back to 1, forward to seek CV out to add octave shift, done. But hey, the video is not over yet. Look at the progress bar. So what's left? Oh, plenty. We have only started. We still need to check out how the octave up and down is created and the harmonics. There is also the issue of blocking the tap keys from reaching the instruments. One thing at a time. Let's start with selecting the octave. We know that this is done by the C tap key, so let's go to the MIDI tap responding to that key, in the hope there's some logic in this bowl of spaghetti. Alright, what do we have here? There are cables from the press going to both up and down sockets of the octave step mod stepper full modulation sockets. This will send the output level of the mod stepper to its midpoint when the tap key C is pressed. Simple enough. Next is the one tap envelope, which is the trig pulse, connected to step up which in turn will increase the mod stepper out level one step. Finally, the two tap go into the step down to decrease the mod stepper out level. That's it. The octave up down midi tapper is covered. Moving on to the output of the octave step mod stepper. This is a unipolar output, so the level will go from zero volt at low end to one volt at step eight. This output goes to input 4 of the measure Seek CV Out. On the front of Seek CV Out, we can see that two knobs are adjusted in the signal path. The input gain is set to 1.52, while the out gain is at 0.5, combinating to 0.76. The exact wanted value here, as if you care, would be 8 times 12, that's the number of octave times the number of half notes per octave, divided by 127, the number of MIDI notes, all in all equaling 0.7559. Using both knobs is actually just a trick to get a better resolution for the result, which we can now follow via a cable and it's going to the shift modulation of the note signal path. We've been here before following the note signal, but I can add now that it is possible to change the final note range by turning the note shift knob. Since the values from the shift knob and the modulation socket are added on a measure device, one shift step per half note and 12 steps for an octave. That's it about the octave selection. Tapping and pressing the C key activates the oct up down MIDI tapper, which in turn will change the output level from the octave step mod stepper. This level is then fine tuned in the Seek CV out measure to shift the note level up or down 12 half tones for each octave step. Just now I realize I could easily split my keyboard in more sections with this method. Huh, great! 
Moving on to checking out the harmonics, we start at the other MIDI tapper. We already know about the tap key C sharp and that we use 1 tap, 2 tap and velocity for the harmonics. The static tap outputs are connected with two cables each. Following these, we end up at the Mingler Harms 1 plus 2, where the 2 tap will activate Ignore for both gate and note of the input 1, being the 4th down harmonic. 1 tap does the same for the 4th up harmonic. Then we have the velocity. Starting again from the MIDI tapper, we follow the cable to input 3 of the gate delay measure. We see immediately that it splits and goes on to the modulation inputs of two knobs in the mesh. Let's look at the front to find out what these are. Ah, they regulate the gate CV signals for the harmonics before they are fed to the mingler. The knobs are set at less than halfway and the velocity from the C-sharp press will be added to the levels of the knobs. This new value is used to multiply the played gate velocity, which is coming in on input 1 of the measure. Medium velocity from the tap key will set the gate levels of the harmonics to about the same as the primary notes. When I apply different velocity on the mouse key press of the C-sharp, you can see the level changing on the gate delay measure. Brighter green is higher velocity. We also see that all knobs from the velocity input of the gate delay measure are off and no modulation applied, so the signal path ends here. Now that was easy enough not to be repeated, right? No? Alright, alright. In short then. The C sharp key will trig the harmonics MIDI tapper. From there, the 1 tap and 2 tap signals go to the Mengler Harms 1 plus 2, where they will block or open for the harmonics. The press velocity goes from MIDI tapper to the gate delay measure, where it affects the levels of the gates of the harmonics. There you are. Happy now? Finally, we reach the most tricky control voltages in this setup namely how to stop the tap keys from reaching the final note and gate. Let me start by giving you some background regarding MIDI tappers. Earlier on, I have chained MIDI tappers from throughout of one to CV input of the next, and MIDI tappers normally block the tap key internally. For many applications this is fine, but there can be problems with this because of the hanging gate of sequences CV. The MIDI tappers in this setup work much better with direct MIDI input to both. But this in turn gives rise to another problem. How to silence the tap keynotes. Luckily some useful sockets are available on the MIDI tapper. But I must admit I almost gave up a couple of times. The solution I finally found utilizes the tap outputs of the MIDI tappers and the static press output of the harmonics MIDI tapper. These are merged in the measure tap blocker to get a kind of stop signal going high when at least one of its inputs is high. This stop signal is then used to set ignore on all gates and notes on the final mingler. You can see the mingler indicators blink when you use any of the tap keys. That's how the tap keys are blocked, and we have now seen everything there is to see in this combinator patch. I think only few of you will have use for this patch as it is, others after some tweaking, and the rest, well, hopefully most of you that followed me all the way here, will at least have learned a thing or two about control voltages and patch cables. In worst case, maybe you at least learn to stay away from harmony devices and videos, eh? <laughs> I've still got a few final words of wisdom on CV routing though. Maybe I've said this before, but here we go anyway. It's always tricky to route sequence notes and gates through different CV devices. I've learned 
while creating Mingler that it's always best to keep the same number of cables in the path before you feed them to a common target, be it Mingler or an instrument. This is due to how the CV is handled in rock extensions. Any socket is only updated once per batch, or frame if you like, which is once per 64 audio samples. Given max one update per some 1.5 millisecond uh, at common sample rates. So with every cable there is a one batch delay. And if notes and gates don't arrive at minglers or instruments in the same time frame, these will react twice. Most of the time this is not heard, or maybe as a distortion on the sound attack. But at times it can be devastating. For instance, if you first have a note change only, while gate is high, this will create a note. And then maybe next millisecond it will be closed by a different gate. Other situations can give different or similar problems. So my advice is, always use the same number of cables in sequence and note and gate paths. And that's it folks. I release you now and I wish for 2014 to be a really good year for all of you. Thanks for watching.